Hello curious scientists, thank you for joining me in this video. This is the Biotech Girl and today we will learn about the structure of the most important molecule that led to the exponential development of biotechnology. That's right, it's the DNA molecule. Now grab your notebooks and let's get started. Before we dive into the structure of the DNA, we have to acknowledge the groundbreaking work done by Rosalind Franklin, James Watson, and Francis Crick, which identified its three-dimensional molecular structure. Let's first learn about the DNA components. Deoxyribonucleic acid famously known as DNA, is a macromolecule composed of three much smaller molecules that are repeatedly bound together millions of times. The sugar component is called 2-deoxyribose, and it's made of five carbons. One, two, three, four, and five. So it's a pentose with an oxygen as part of the ring structure. The second chemical component is a simple phosphate group, which we will present like this. And the third one is a nitrogenous base, which can be in the form of a two-ringed purine, adenine and guanine, or a single ring structure known as pyrimidine, such as cytosine and thymine. These are a bit challenging to remember, but if you repeat them many times, you will easily memorize them. So the purines are adenine and guanine, the pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine. Or for example, you can get a couple degrees in biology, then you'll hear and say them so many times that you can start making videos about them without even checking what exactly they were called. So, the DNA has a sugar component called deoxyribose, a phosphate group and a nitrogenous base. These are bound to each other in this manner. One sugar bound to the nitrogenous base is called a nucleoside, and all three components bound together create a nucleotide, which is one monomer of the polymeric DNA macromolecule. This means that many monomers bound together create one of the two DNA strands. We will see this more clearly in the following slides. Now let's focus on the DNA backbone. The backbone of the DNA molecule is created by binding together the sugar and phosphate with covalent phosphodiester bonds, forming a chain between the sugar of one nucleotide and the phosphate of the next. So the backbone is represented by alternating deoxyribose and phosphate. You might be wondering, if the sugar and phosphate are always the same, then where is the genetic information stored? The answer is, when the nitrogenous base is attached to each sugar, it creates a sequence along the chain, which encodes the genes. The other complementary strand of the DNA molecule is created when the nitrogenous bases of the first polynucleotide strand bind to its neighboring strand with two or three hydrogen bonds, depending on the type of the base. A large part of the DNA, more than 98% for humans, is non-coding, which means that these sections do not serve as patterns for protein synthesis. The overall three-dimensional DNA molecule looks as shown on this slide. A double helix, which basically means that it looks like a twisted ladder in which the rails or the chains are made up of sugar phosphate backbone, and the steps represent the nitrogenous bases complementary bound with hydrogen bonds. In DNA, adenine always binds to thymine with two hydrogen bonds, and cytosine always binds to guanine with three hydrogen bonds, and vice versa. Let's now get into the DNA structure in some more detail. We've already established that the DNA is created uh, by repeatedly binding the neighboring nucleotides with uh, phosphodiester bonds between the 3' prime end of the first sugar molecule and the 5' prime end of the next one. This creates one chain of the DNA helix. The other one is created by complementary binding the nitrogenous base from the first um, chain to the nitrogenous base of the next one. 
so one strand goes from the five prime end towards three prime end and the other one goes from three prime to five prime end this means that they both have directionality however it's the opposite direction so that means that they are anti-parallel Another important word to know here is uh, complementary, which means that we can easily predict which bases are on the strand if we already know the ones on the opposite strand in the same location. So for example, if here we have a tiny as a nitrogen space, we already automatically know that uh, adenine is on the opposite strand. If it's guanine, then on the opposite strand we have cytosine. And uh, if you can notice, it's always a pyrimidine base binding to a purine base. Two rings binding with one ring. Now that we have created two chains, let's see what they look like when we zoom out further. So DNA helix is uh, like a twisted ladder, and we can notice that there's a section in the DNA um, helix where uh, the backbones are further apart, which is called the major groove, and uh, there's a section where the backbones are closer together, which is called the minor groove. This is because the base pairs have a different width on the opposing sides. Uh, the length in which the DNA helix makes a complete uh, turn is uh, 3.4 nanometers. And it's easy to remember because 0.34 nanometers is the distance between two subsequent ba uh, bases from a chain, which means that um, there are 10 nucleotides in a complete turn. However, the overall structure of the DNA molecule is even more complex than I've shown here because it is um, very dynamic along the length and it creates like loops, coils, and um, other shapes. For example, uh, in eukaryotes, it binds to the histone proteins, um, which are then uh, organized on a higher level to chromosomes. In prokaryotes, such as bacteria and archaea, which do not have a nucleus, the DNA is found only in the cytoplasm, as one circular chromosome, and may also sometimes have smaller DNA molecules called plasmids. In eukaryotes, such as animals, plants, fungi, and protists, DNA is found inside the cell nucleus as nuclear DNA, which is organized into structures called chromosomes with the help of chromatin proteins, known as histones. Except in the nucleus, some of the eukaryotic DNA is found in the mitochondria as mitochondrial DNA or in chloroplasts as chloroplast DNA. Thank you for watching until the end. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share the video and feel free to ask questions. Until next time, stay curious.